Hello and welcome back everyone. Unlike reversible pulpitis, which is mostly an acute condition, irreversible pulpitis is more of a chronic condition. It is mostly a sequel to or a progression from a tooth that was suffering from reversible pulpitis. Irreversible pulpitis is a severe inflammatory condition in which the pulp will eventually progress to necrosis, regardless of whether the cause of inflammation is removed or not. Hence the name irreversible, because the condition of the pulp is now essentially irreversible. The causes of irreversible pulpitis are generally similar to the reversible pulpitis except that the causes are now much more exaggerated. Like the caries of pits and fissures once progressed deep enough to cause the pulp to be irreversibly inflamed. So the pulp goes from reversible inflammation to irreversible inflammation. Now how to diagnose irreversible pulpitis? The irreversible pulpitis can either be symptomless or it can also have clinical signs and symptoms. When with symptoms, the patient usually presents with spontaneous lingering pain. That means the pain will elect without any external stimuli. The pain will essentially start on its own. So a patient having a tooth with irreversible pulpitis will complain of a spontaneous pain not caused by anything and that pain will last a good couple of minutes or even a few hours before dying off. And this is known as the lingering nature of pain. Now this may happen in an episodic manner from time to time or may just be continuous in nature. Pain from irreversible pulpitis is really sharp or dull in nature and it can be localized on the tooth or it can also be diffuse in nature. Application of heat on a tooth with irreversible pulpitis results in immediate painful response while that of cold stimulus may relieve the pain of the patient because cold causes vasoconstriction of the nerves and relieves pain. Now what is the treatment of irreversible pulpitis? So as I previously stated, removing the cause of inflammation such as removing carious lesions will never be enough as the pulp will eventually progress to necrosis regardless of that. The only possible treatment is root canal or extraction of the tooth with irreversible pulpitis. Simply removal of caries or the cause of inflammation is not enough in this case of irreversible pulpitis. There needs to be a definitive treatment of pulp removal. So root canal or in worst cases, extraction of the tooth is a treatment of irreversible pulpitis. Now let's do a simple clinical question for better understanding. A 19-year-old female patient came into your OPD with pain in her 2-6. 2-6 meaning that it is upper left molar in FTI system. Upon further investigation, you find out that the pain has been there for about two weeks and the patient has been waking up at night often due to sudden pain in her tooth. Upon clinical examination, you find out that there is a lesion on the mesial surface of 2-6. What is your possible diagnosis? A. Reversible pulpitis B. Irreversible pulpitis C. Gingivitis and D. Tooth fracture So you have 5 seconds to read the question once again and then I will try to explain the answer. So based on the information we are provided in the question, there are two options that are most likely correct. It may either be irreversible pulpitis or reversible pulpitis. Gingivitis and tooth fracture are both incorrect since the symptoms are not even close to either of them. Now as we have previously studied, reversible pulpitis is more of an acute condition. So a patient with a tooth suffering from reversible pulpitis will most likely present in the OPD with pain for about a couple of days. But here the patient has been experiencing pain for about two weeks. And secondly, pain of reversible pulpitis is never spontaneous in nature. It occurs only when an external stimulus such as mastication which occurs during biting, chewing is applied on the tooth. But here the patient is giving a history of experiencing spontaneous pain with no external stimulus which occurs at night when the patient is not masticating or anything. So based on these two given history findings in the question, irreversible pulpitis is the most likely diagnosis in this case. So this was all on irreversible pulpitis. If you still have any confusions or any questions, please comment down below and I will try my best within my knowledge to answer them. If you have not seen my previous video on reversible pulpitis, make sure to check it out. The link will be present on the top right corner and also in the description. As always, please take care of yourselves and your loved ones. Stay safe and goodbye.